Larry Hoover here. Today I want to talk about how nations that are on the rise can sometimes leapfrog uh, older um, nations that are uh, wealthier, more developed is a term a lot of people use, developing nations and developed nations. Where I first noticed this was several years ago I was driving around Portugal and I noticed their freeways and their freeway um, rest areas the, or the places where you get the food, the stops on the freeways, they were much fancier and more advanced than ours in the United States. And at first I said, well, that's strange because this is a poorer country and all that. And then I realized, well, these are all brand new, you know. They just built them because they didn't have the money back in the 50s when America built our interstate system or first put it in place. And so even though they were kind of behind us, well, they've passed us up. And then I was thinking about it. Well, you know, in China and India, they aren't going to mess around with stringing up telephone wire all over the country. They're going to uh, jump right to cell phones. So they're like leapfrog where we were at. Uh, they aren't going to have little film developing centers where you take your roll of film down and wait for it to be developed. Those people are all going to go straight to uh, um, digital photography and skip that process. So in some ways get ahead of us and, and maybe the biggest case of all is the extent to which Japanese and German industry was almost completely rebuilt after World War II, often with help from the United States to get them back so that the Japanese companies ended up with newer steel mills and all that kind of jazz. So this whole process, it keeps going on, but uh, it's still going on and it's important to understand the future. And where I really noticed this recently was I was in Mexico and I was in Spain this spring, spring of 2011, and I had visited both of them um, uh, 25 years before for the first time. I'd seen them in between too and watched their evolution. But when I went to Spain and Mexico 25 years ago, it was pretty clear to me that Spain was a much more advanced country in so many ways and certainly wealthier and all that. This time when I went to both countries, it struck me that, that Mexico is much more advanced than Spain. And what do I mean by that? Well, certainly Spain has an infrastructure that's uh, more advanced, although Mexico is building theirs quickly and pouring these freeways and toll roads and building new universities all over. But a lot of the innovations of the modern era, uh, Spain doesn't have. Um, I always write things in my little tablet here. And I was taking notes in the city of Granada, Spain on a Sunday afternoon and my pen ran out of ink. And so I said, well, I'll run to the grocery store and get a pen. Well, you go, there weren't many grocery stores open, but the ones that were open say, well, we're a grocery store. Why would we have a pen? And then I went to the drugstore and they said, well, we're a pharmacy. Why would we have a pen, you know? And I finally found a newsstand after, you know, half hour, 45 minutes of searching. And I realized, well, this isn't real convenient. And you can say, well, there's laws in Spain that prohibit uh, uh, opening of stores on Sunday or certain types of stores or whatever. But on a broader basis, when, when I'm in Mexico, they have grasped the uh, American invention of the modern drugstore. Here it's Walgreens and CVS in Mexico, a company called Sanborns. It actually goes much further than a drugstore. It's a department store and everything. And they have plenty of pharmacies down there too. But Sanborns is open all the time and has what you need. Mexico has grasped the idea of the convenience store. Another great American invention came out of the Thompson family in Dallas with their seven, the Southland Ice Company became 7-Eleven. And down in Mexico, the biggest operator is called OXO, O-X-X-O. And it's a wonderful outfit. Last I looked, I think over 7,000 stores. And they're sweeping through Latin America. And so what I saw is in terms of human convenience, the ease of living in some ways, that uh, Mexico is ahead of Spain. But it wasn't just that. It's also a sense, and, and I love Spain, I love all of Europe, I'm partial to Italy, but in Spain there was a sense that people were satisfied with the way things are. That, you know, it's okay, we're doing great, we're doing fine, we don't have to worry about it, we don't have to work at it, we don't have to reach, we don't have to stretch. We're not hungry, we're not ambitious. And I spent uh, enough time there to feel that as I traveled around and looked at their tourism system. And, you know, there were high points in it, but man, there were a lot of low points where People really didn't care whether you gave them your business or not. That ain't happening in Mexico. I can assure you, I'm going to Mexico a lot. And the people there are ambitious. They're hungry. They're dissatisfied with their lives. And maybe you'll say, well, in Spain, they have, should be satisfied. They have a great life. And in Mexico, they should be dissatisfied. They got all these problems. It goes deeper than that. It's maybe to some degree it's an American thing, the Americas, all the way from the tip of Argentina and Chile to the top of Canada. But, but it's more than that because it's also going on in Asia. 
there's this dissatisfaction with life. It certainly is an American characteristic in the United States of America. When people ask me as an entrepreneur, are you happy? I'm like, well, not really. I can't be and be an entrepreneur at the same time. I mean, I can be happy, but I can't be satisfied. I've got to be dissatisfied. And I think when you look at it, and you go through Latin America, because the things I say about Mexico apply to the rest of Latin America to a large degree, there's a dissatisfaction that you don't see in Europe. And that dissatisfaction gives me reason to be optimistic about the future. And a last little bit of data I'll throw in this. Today's Wall Street Journal has an article where in the midst of a, of a big debate in the United States about uh, the United States government debt and our ratings at the rating agencies and what happens to our interest rates if we miss a payment or if we have too much debt and the government's losing too much money and all that. Well, the Wall Street Journal, they did a fascinating story showing how a lot of the old developing nations, the poor nations, which used to have to pay higher interest rates for money because they were considered riskier, a lot of them are now paying lower interest rates because when everything, the dust all settles out, the bankers feel more comfortable with them. So the examples were that Brazil pays a much lower interest rate than does Portugal, the old you know, parent country, colonial country. And I was actually a little surprised by this. Mexico pays a much lower rate than Spain. Now, Spain's has spiked up because there are concerns about the Spanish economy. And, and, and I understand a lot of that's about paying debts and if you borrowed too much, which to some degree is a separate issue from what I'm talking about, but to some degree it isn't because bankers' confidence in the economy also relates to their confidence that the economy will grow, that it can pay back that debt, that there's a future there. And I think that that little Wall Street Journal article was saying, hey, the bankers in some ways have more confidence in the future of Brazil and Mexico than they do these older countries. And I don't think it's just a matter of being older because you can be an older country and still be dynamic and do interesting things. My overall observation is Holland has got a fair amount going. Some of the Scandinavian countries, maybe Switzerland. Uh, England has really come back from the grave economically uh, since uh, uh, after socialism and, and when Margaret Thatcher came in and privatized things. And now it's a country that actually has jobs and created some jobs, which wasn't true for a long time. But the thing is, is these developing nations, they can come along and they can do great things. And there are all these little indicators, both the ones I've seen traveling and what I saw in the banks. And, and so when I look at a country, like I look at Mexico, I look at their future, yeah, they got a lot of issues. They got the crime, they got corruption, they got uh, policemen that aren't, aren't good, they're you know, bad guys. Uh, I could list a lot of issues. But I've got to look 20 or 30 years in the future if I'm going to think entrepreneurially. And when I look at that, I see, for example, in Mexico City, a city that's really trying to deal with the pollution issues. It's a much cleaner city than it was 10 years ago. I see a city that's dealing with the crime issues. It's a safer city than it was 10 years ago. I see them trying new ideas and new things in some ways much more advanced than what goes on in, say, Austin, Texas, my beloved city where I live or the other parts of the United States, the things they're trying with their transportation system and bicycle sharing systems, but all different aspects of their lives. Where they, and, and they actually have all these wonderful traditions that you can attribute some of that to the Spanish, a lot of it, but they have all kinds of cool old stuff that's hundreds of years old and, of course, going back before that to the Aztecs and the Mayans and all those dudes, you know. But I can see a Mexico City that in 50 years is much more advanced than most American cities. And I realize most people don't see that, but I think if you really look at these things and think about them hard, at least give that viewpoint a shot and think about how that affects you, your enterprise, your family, where you should travel, what's going on in the world. Uh, I'm Gary Hoover. It was good to see you. I'll see you later.